Apple will host its second event of the fall this coming Tuesday, and we're finally expecting to hear more about the upcoming iPhone 12. We're going to be talking about the specifics, so stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to Today in Tech. I'm Juliet Beauchamp and I'm here as always with Macworld senior writer Michael Simon as well as Computer World executive editor Ken Mingus. So thank you both so much as always for joining me. So the event is called High Speed, not high, the opposite of low, but high is in hello speed. So, you know, what what could they possibly be talking about? A clever about? play on words there, Apple. <laughs> oh yeah, come on. It's 5G. Yeah, baby, the future's here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's the uh, th there's several layers of, of of speed which we'll get into as this conversation goes on. But yeah, I think um, I mean we have the processor, we have maybe a high uh, a high frequency um, high refresh rate screen, we have the 5G modem. So yeah, these phones are going to be marketed as the fastest Apple has ever made, which they always do. But in this case, they they actually are. Well, aren't, generally, though, Michael, aren't they always every year? There, has there ever been an, a, an iPhone that was actually slower than a predecessor? Well, no. I mean, <laughs> the, the processor <laughs> the processor does get faster every time, but the modem hasn't in in a while. You know, the the it's been LTE. They've been you know Wi-Fi six came along. They 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 tweaked the modems here and there, but this is going to be a big jump from four G LTE to five G where available, which is not all that available yet. But if you can get it, if you have T-Mobile and you pay for your uh, a certain plan, you, you get 5G in it. Or if you're in an area of Verizon that covers it or AT&T, you're going to see tremendous speed boosts, speed boosts over LTE when you're you know just kind of walking around. Don't you think this is sort of a situation where we're finally getting both the chicken and the egg? Because, you know, until now, the whole 5G networking, you know, infrastructure has been sort of slowly being rolled out. In, in, as you said, in very sort of, you know, isolated pockets. Now that you've got something as, as popular as, as the iPhone, the new iPhone 12, uh, that's going to mean a lot of people have a 5G capable phone. I mean, I know on the Android side, there are already 5G phones, but, you know, Apple's such a big player that this is the sort of thing that might spur faster uh, rollout of 5G. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much faster or slower they can do it, but what it will mean is that it will encourage networks to you know invest more into this infrastructure now the pandemic has kind of put a put a pause on all these these rollouts and all these build outs but you know it's definitely a uh, top priority and yeah as you say there are samsung phones the galaxy note 20 the samsung s20 oneplus makes a couple of 5g phones lg has one google just came out with one they're there they're not apple and they're not, you know, so let's say there's 2 million Android phones out there, maybe 5 million. Apple's going to sell 50 million. I was just going to say, like, probably, probably yeah. about 10 times right. that amount. That, in, that's, in three that's a pretty good spur, yeah. Exactly. So that's, you know, all of a sudden what is a bit of a niche thing and a cool thing is now ubiquitous mainstream everywhere. So I think the first thing we're going to see is I think T-Mobile is going to benefit most from this because they actually have a pretty extensive network in place. They're going to advertise the hell out of it, which they already do. But um, I think they will benefit from switchers who want to take advantage of the network. It's 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 pretty good. You know, you're not going to get two gig speeds, but it's um, uh, 150 to 200 in, in, in my my testing around here. I live in Connecticut and I'm, I'm in the coverage area. And, you know, I get I get faster than LTE on LTE Verizon. I get around 70 to 100 on a good day. And on, with with T Mobile, I can get one fifty to two hundred. That that's that's significant. Fifty to one hundred percent faster is is a lot. And I think that if T Mobile plays its cards right, they could benefit. Um, Verizon's going to have to get the ball rolling because they have this millimeter wave, which is you know little tiny cells that shoot out literally sh shoot out beams to your phone. And if you're not standing right in front of one, you ain't getting it. And they don't yet have a nationwide or anything even close to nationwide um, 5G network yet. There's talk that they're going, you know, it's coming and rolling out and all that other. But um, if you're on Verizon and you pay for 5G or you, you you have a plan that has 5G, you're not really getting anything. 
So, so wait, you mean AT and T telling me that five G E is already here? That's, yeah, five G E is AT and T. I'm uh, so I'm the five G E. I'll be so glad when that scam is gone and we have yeah. real five G. They, they on, got AT and T got called out pretty good for it. They 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 pulled this last time with LTE. Also, they had um, three Edge Edge Plus or something. I forget what it was, but um, yeah, it's it's all nonsense. What else? What five G E is is slightly faster LTE. It, you're not. It is nothing resembling a, f uh, a next generation network at, at play there, and AT and T is in the same boat as Verizon. They don't really have like the infrastructure in the U.S. to to take advantage of. It's it's really running now T-Mobile slash Sprint, and and you know just small little pockets here and there. The the problem with Verizon is they went they kind of did it backwards. So they did the hard part first. So millimeter wave is 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 much more concentrated, is much more difficult to deploy. And what they were doing is they were building it out in in you know in dense cities like New York and, and things like this, and also in sports arenas, which is where it's really going to be useful. Because if you've ever been to a concert or a sporting event, we did used to do those at one point. <laughs> and you tried to send a text or a picture, it did nothing happen because there were too many people using it at once. Uh, what what 5G, particularly millimeter wave, is going to be like having a, a Wi-Fi network that get, that reaches everyone and doesn't get 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 jammed up. So the the potential there is awesome. the The problem is, you know, we're not doing that anymore. So Verizon's kind of paused that whole rollout, or not paused it, but you know, delayed it a bit. And now they have to work on what they call sub six gigahertz um, 5G. So that's that's the other flavor. So there's there's millimeter wave. And sub six gigahertz. Those are the two different types of 5G, and they, they do work together eventually. You can buy phones with one or the other, and I think that's what Apple's going to do here. I think all of the phones will support sub six gig, which is what T-Mobile has. That's the comparable to LTE version of 5G, couple hundred megabits a second um, download speeds when you're uh, you know walking around. The other one, the millimeter wave one, like as we were just talking about, it's deployed in very, very small uh, areas. So they'll probably reserve that for the pro models to create one to create some kind of a differentiation, a, a, a differentiation between the, the two models, and two, you know, it, they don't need to bring it to all the phones, and it is expensive. Verizon charges an extra hundred bucks on top of most Android phones for millimeter wave, so it's 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 not cheap. So if they're going to try to sell a six hundred fifty or a seven hundred dollar iPhone twelve, they can shave some costs by just not having millimeter wave in there, and no one's going to notice or even miss it. You know, we should probably at least acknowledge for the record the assumption is that we're going to be getting four phones this year. Yeah, right. Yeah, all you that. Know, just, yeah, and they're I, redesigned I, to look what, more. You like, people don't follow rumors like we do. <laughs> well, I do. No, as much as I've appreciated the tour of the five G infrastructure, because now I know what everything's going to be like in twenty twenty four. You know, just the just problem. Thinking, the problem I have with sorry to interrupt. The problem I, I have with five G is that when someone answers a simple question, it, it's a very complicated answer. And I've gone through that spiel numerous times on videos and, and in articles, but like you, it's it's not a one sentence answer. And I'm curious to see how Apple plays it on Tuesday because most people have no idea what the hell 5G is. Most no, people don't they, really know what LTE is. They buy a phone, they turn it on, and they pay for a plan, and it works. Now, 5G isn't like that at all. Nobody who buys an iPhone is going to have 5G on day one because they have to call their carrier, they have to sign up for a plan. Uh, like I'm on a pl I'm, I'm on an older Verizon plan, and I would have to cancel that plan and get an unlimited plan and pay more, even though it's included. It's not included in my plan because I have an older plan, and that's true of a lot of people. Family plans, you know, all, all different types of things. So it's going to be messy at the at the outset of this thing, no matter what's going on. Uh, for carriers and Apple and and customers are going to have to you know navigate these waters to get 5G connected, and then if you have a, a, the, the wrong carrier and you sign it up, you're going to look at your phone and say, well, what the heck? Nothing's happening. It's not faster. What's going on? Because it's not there. So there's, there's a lot to mitigate when this 5G iPhone lands. And I'm curious to see how Apple, you know, sells all that.
I, you know, I think that's a really good point because obviously we're sort of getting used to these virtual events from Apple, which, and I really like the format, you know, the yeah, way that they sure. are able to show off the product and have different people in the video. Yeah. You know, it is like one long infomercial, but I, I, I kind of like it because at least the way Apple's doing it, because they do it very well. And I think, you know, we'll get a real sense for how they plan to market these things and explain this technology, which, as you say, has so many layers uh, when we see the event on uh, Tuesday. We're assuming what hour and a half, two hours, probably two. usual. Yeah, generally hour, hour and a half, uh, two hours. Yep. But you know the tagline high speed. It's clear that they're going to promote the speediness of five G as they should. But they just have to capture. Like you know, my dad's going to buy one. He's going to call me up and say, well, "What's with five G?" And you know, twenty. And then you're going to give him your. You're going to give him your fifteen minutes <laughs> yeah, right. spiel. <laughs> and at the end, he'll <laughs> and at the end he'll ask you the same question. Right. So what is it? With 5G? It's not easy to understand. It's hard. Yeah. 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 It's also interesting, though, that, you know, as expect, as predicted, you know, we had talked about this before early in the year or early in the fall. Uh, I think it was right around Labor Day, you know, probably three events this fall. We got the one in September. We've got the one now on October 13th, which we had also sort of said would yep. seem to be the most logical date and presumably one coming up uh, later in the year for the Apple Silicon. Well, I mean, maybe the other thing is what if like what if the A14 chip, so that's going to be, that's the one in the, in the next iPhone. It's uh, A14 Bionic. They already announced it as part of the iPad Air launch, which hasn't really launched, but they announced it um, back at the Apple Watch Time Flies events. Now, high speed could be a reference to that chip. And they could say, okay, here's the iPhone and it's powered, but wait, there's more. It's also in the new Mac and here's what that does. So they could use this event to do both things. I'm of the mind that, the Mac is important enough this year where it, where it needs its own event, but, but, you know, maybe not. I don't know. I'd be surprised. And, and the reason I say that if this were a regular iPhone year, they might actually be able to do the two of them in one, one announcement, but because again, you know, based on the assumptions because of the pandemic, slow supply chains, et cetera, that, you know, it's very, very possible that these phones are going to roll out in two waves with, yeah. with the less, the lesser phones. And I use that term very loosely. Uh, you yeah, know, the less and more popular phones. <laughs> the more popular. <laughs> Ooh, I, I've been dissed. Um, no, uh, with the with the with the two models rolling out early, you know. Yeah. So let's say you know they're announced on the thirteenth. Maybe uh, orders start on the sixteenth, and then the new phones show up a week later. You know, with the high end models, the iPhone twelve Pro Max and or Pro and Pro Max showing up theoretically sometime in November. The, you know, the question I wonder is, will we be able to order them all? Beginning on say the 16th, or are they going to hold? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Orders? But it, 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 it's not unprecedented for Apple to have two waves of ordering and two waves of deliveries. That happened with the iPhone 10, happened with the iPhone 10R. They, um, you know, they shipped one, and then a couple of weeks later, they shipped the other. So maybe, maybe you order them together, and it doesn't ship for a month and a half. My my guess is that they like to keep things tight, so they would have the ordering and the delivery for the 12 and the 12 Mini, which we haven't talked about yet. We'll get into that in a second. And then a couple of weeks later, you know, assuming they're in two batches, a couple of weeks later, they'll have the same thing, the, the, the ordering and then the, and then the shipping for the for the for the pro, the pros. Yeah, I don't I, Apple doesn't tend to like people. They haven't done a system where they have people ordering phones and then you wait six weeks no. for your phone. Yeah, they, they delay stuff, you know, like, yeah. you know, the Mac Pro <laughs> was what, six months, eight months. I mean, they, they delay things. They'll announce it and then say, well, you'll be able to get this in a few months. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a Mac. Uh, they say you can get it in December, maybe, but they would. They generally don't let you order something and then say it'll ship, you know, in, in two to three months. Like they, yeah. they, don't, they just don't do that. Okay, so iPhone Mini. You know, you have me intrigued because yeah. that that is not a phone that I particularly. I like bigger, you know, big screen, whatever. But what what's the idea behind the iPhone Mini, if that's what it's called? You know, is it because uh, it's sort of a, a you know not a step back, but it's a blast from the past, if you will. I mean, it's just a smaller version of the iPhone 12. So the iPhone 12 will be 6.1 inches, which is the same size as the iPhone 11. Um, slightly different, um, maybe sl slimmer bezels, maybe um, uh, they, they're saying that there's going to be flat edges, kind of like the iPad Pro or the iPhone 5, whichever you want to uh, reference. So it's going to look a little bit differently. And then, so that's going to go up. Um, all right. So we have four models. So the iPhone Pro Max or 12 Pro Max is going to be 6.7 inches, which is a little bit bigger than it is now. Uh, trim those bezels, and it's probably a very similar footprint. 
iPhone 12 Pro is going to be 6.1 inches. That's that's a bit bigger because Apple pulled that weird thing where it was 5.8 inches last time, the, the last couple of times. So that one will be a touch bigger. Again, trim the bezels and it's not, it's you know, it's going to feel about the same. Then the iPhone 12, which is the iPhone 11 replacement, is the same size, 6.1 inches. That's what it is now as well. Uh, probably OLED instead of LCD. That's the rumor is that they're going to get rid of LCDs on the iPhones for the first time, which is nice. And the iPhone 12 mini would be the 5.4 or, or a 5.4 inch version of the iPhone 12. So that's a little smaller than the iPhone. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind here. That's a little smaller than the iPhone 11 pro, which was 5.8 inches about, you know, was a four tenths of an inch. Uh, based on what we've extrapolated, it's going to be about the size of the iPhone SE. I wanted to ask you about that because explain, yeah. explain iPhone mini versus iPhone SE, because to me, those things seem to be like really overlapping. Well, Where, no, yes, no, not really. The iPhone SE is 400 bucks home button, LCD screen, you know, new tech inside. The iPhone mini is basically a smaller version of the iPhone or the iPhone 12 mini is a smaller version of the iPhone 12. So it's going to be probably 650, 6, 6, 650 or seven around there. And you're getting quite a bit different um, okay. look and okay. feel for the phone. It's basically a uh, take your phone and shrink it. That's, you know, it's all screen, face ID, gesture navigation, all that stuff, the A4, A14, all that, all the stuff that you want in an, in an iPhone, in a new iPhone, a 2020 iPhone, just a little bit smaller. That's, that's all it is. It's not a budget phone or a cut rate phone like the iPhone SE is. It's not trimming features. I, I expect it to have the same features as the iPhone 12, but in a, just in a little bit of a smaller package. Any, any thoughts on whether or not there's any chance we might get that combo of like face ID and then the power button that has like touch ID built into it? Uh, well, not this time, not the, maybe just, down the road. I mean, they just introduced that with the iPad Air. Right. I'd be surprised if it made its way into the iPhone without anybody knowing it. Uh, maybe in the future, I, I'm of the mind that you don't need multiple biometrics. Android used to do that. And it was a, it was just very. I'm confusing. thinking only because of the pandemic, yeah. and I get so tired of trying to get yeah. Face ID to read my face with a mask on. I just swipe up and punch in. I do, code. I do, I like do. The olden days. Okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or re re retrain it with the mask on, <laughs> but you just won't be able to unlock it. Can you, can you do that? Mask. But then, yeah, exactly. No, I'm assuming I don't, you can. I don't, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't. I, I thought I had read that. somewhere that you it can. It needs. It might not know, because half your face is covered. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, correct. I mean, you know, they can come out with an algorithm that that maybe fixes that. But I mean, the bottom line is it's made for it's made for your face. I mean, it's it's a it's a tricky thing that, that this it's is looking all for a chin and, and a mouth. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good. It's good that it doesn't work. Like we should be happy that it, the system works well enough to, to, to not recognize us. But yeah, it is frustrating. But, you know, just type in your passcode. Who cares? Come on, Ken. You're a you're a writer. So, <laughs> just so clicking a few more things. So we're going to have at this event iPhone, probably not, you're saying, Mike, the new Mac with Apple Silicon, but what about some uh, of these? Yeah, I'm not so sure, but maybe, maybe, maybe okay. not. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not, not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to take a guess at that because it's, I, in my mind, it's really 50-50. Okay, fair enough. I'm glad we got some clarification, but what about some <laughs> of these, <laughs> what about some of these, like, you know, the, the AirPods of it all? Yeah. What about There's, that? Yeah, I mean, there's AirTags, which have been rumored for uh, forever now. I mean, I feel like they are a product. Because They've I, got I've to show so up at some them. point, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they have to. And they definitely make sense with the iPhone. I'm not 100% sure how these fit or why, they, why they're making them. But what they are is like, they're kind of like tile trackers. If, if you've ever used a tile, um, you stick them to something or you attach them to something. And if you lose that something, you can kind of triangulate the position of where it is based on other people who have tiles and Bluetooth and proximity and stuff. Uh, tile works well. iPhone would work ridiculously well because there's so many iPhones. So what it would do is it would, it would privately anonymize IP data and all this other stuff that it senses in Bluetooth to really kind of pinpoint like, oh, my, my, I dropped my keys at the corner of whatever and whatever. And that's where they are because it would use the iPhones in the vicinity with this uh, uh, U1 chip that's in the 11 and, and will be in the 12 and a couple other products um, with, the, with, the, with the tracker 
to to you know pinpoint where your keys are or where your wallet is or where your kid is or whatever 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 you attach it to. Are you going to I attach mean, this to a kid? My, I might. You know, my my kid gets. He likes to. He likes to wonder. <laughs> well, there you go. And you know I mean, what? You know, Actually, people, I could parents, use it. I could use this use, for the dog. Parents attach it to like backpacks and stuff. I'm going to attach this to the dog. If he ever gets loose, I could find him. I mean, and then the the million dollar question is how much do these things cost and um, how like how do you attach them? Apple's not going to just have a sticker that you attach it to something. What do they look like? And there's a bunch of rumors about that. I don't know. They'll they'll sell it in a way that they'll pretend like they're reinventing the wheel here. But it sounds like it's just the, the same thing that's been out for for five or so years. Um, my problem with these trackers is well, a the, the, the tile one had limited use because again, you it's based on proximity and it, you know they're not that popular. Uh, also, my I have one of my keys that that died about three years ago, and I never replaced it. You know, they they have batteries in them, so like, how is Apple going to mitigate all that? You know, so they got the they, if let's say they're thirty dollars each, which sounds like a nice round of twenty nine dollars in Apple speak. They got to convince people that they need these things. So um, I'm curious to see how it all works, how it ties into um, the phone and the other devices and everything else, and you know what what the benefit is by buying an Apple one over, over a tile one, which, which would be a, a lot cheaper. Uh, also AirPods, maybe AirPods studio. Um, there's talk of like, you know, those beats studio, the big, the big yeah, yeah, um, yeah. cans that go over your head um, that they're working on, on a, on a version of that uh, with under the AirPods, under the AirPods brand, noise canceling, uh, all this Bluetooth, all the things that go with that. Um, sure. Probably around three or three, three fifty base that's the the general price range for those higher end headphones um that makes sense to me because airpods are so wildly popular just to expand that line into something that people might not want the little earbuds but they do want this it would have all the same functionality as airpods you take them off and they stop you know they pause all that stuff just in a different package all right you know if you let me just one more thought i was just thinking you know obviously if, if for something like that that has the hallmarks of holiday gift yeah, sure. giving you know so i would think they might want to get that announcement out earlier rather than later just to get ahead of the you know mm -hmm. as people are thinking about what they're doing for the holidays so we may I'm, my gut would tell me since you're 50 50 on the uh, silicon max next week i i think it's more likely we get the phones and then we get things like you know the the, the accessories not yeah. not the big mac you know yeah That's they definitely guess. um those things tie in well to the iPhone, the air, you know, and doesn't have a headphone jack. So here are your Bluetooth speakers. It's not going to come with Bluetooth speakers, uh, headphones, earbuds, whatever. Uh, based on what we've read, they're taking them out of the box. So that's another way like, oh, look, uh, we're going to give you this thing. Le less is on. more. Less yeah. is more. So um, that they do make, they go hand in hand. The AirPod, the original AirPods were, were launched at the iPhone 7 and then like they, they, they work together. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that AirTags, same, you know, they, they, they're a, you know, a separate thing, but they, you know, they, they, they really go hand in hand with the iPhone. So yeah, those, those make sense. Um, maybe some dates on when all these services are going to, going to launch to um, Apple one. We don't know the Apple fitness. We don't know. Uh, so they probably talk a little bit about that. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's any surprises. I don't think so. I don't think there's any surprises ever in tech land anymore. Not anymore. Every, every, everything leaks. Yeah. But it's at least nice to know that, you know, we've got basically the second of three Christmases this fall, you know, <laughs> if you, if you assume that an Apple, yeah. uh, an Apple announcement is a Christmas. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. We'll yes. know in a week. So if you're Ken, it's a Christmas. If you're Ken, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Ken, Ken has the, the bankroll to buy all this stuff. No, <laughs> no. We're not Ken all that has lucky. The, no, Ken has the debt <laughs> over his head. Lots of debt. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both so much as always. And you know what? I guess we'll see for sure next week when we're back. Just how I mean, I'm not necessarily how right we all were, but what actually came true, what actually was announced. And, you know, maybe we'll have a better idea of when that uh, Apple Silicon Mac is coming. So thank you both. So yeah, much, well, if it doesn't always. come next week, um, my guess is early November, late October. If they, 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 they're not going to wait too long. No. Put it. Put it in writing right now. <laughs> Mike's on it. All right. <laughs> Thank wait, you. Wait, both. wait. We can, we can look at the calendar again. I'm going to say uh, <laughs> not no, election day. November. November 9th. Oh yeah, you're right. So it's either going to be October 27th or November 9th. Yeah, but we don't know what what kind of hellscape this country is going to be in after the election. So they probably want to get it. Before and that. moving on. <laughs> All right. 
Thank you both so much as always for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week to, you know, summarize anything. If anything crazy happens, we'll definitely be talking about it next week. So thanks again so much, both of you. Bye. <laughs> And thank you all so much for watching this episode of Today in Tech. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me know in the comments below what you're most looking forward to at the High Speed event. If you are not looking forward to any of it, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. If you have any crazy wild predictions about the event, let me know once again. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.